the hands of those who dedicate their lives to creating remarkable food, I give you a mouth-on approach to Quebec City's culinary culture. I want to give you an insider's view of these local friendly places that fuel my passion for Quebec City and the people behind its gastronomy. We'll eat, drink, travel through flavors, take some downtime, and learn how to cook. We're now headed to one of the liveliest neighborhoods of Quebec, Saint Roch. Hi, my name is Alison Van Rassel. Quebec City is my home. As a food journalist, I've either reviewed or eaten in every restaurant in the city. So why don't you let me be your foodie guide to Quebec City? No matter the season, there's always a lineup at Toraya Ramen in Saint-Roch, but it is most definitely always worth the wait. You'll travel straight to Tokyo through Chef Miyano Sakai's authentic Japanese flavors. Toraya Ramen will give you the best bang for your buck, including organic sake and truly typical Japanese snacks. Here's my chance to finally know everything about Miyano's cooking. Miano, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you, Alison. And your restaurant, yes. Toraya. Yeah, that's what right. is Toraya? Yeah. Toraya? Toraya is a Japanese, small, small Japanese restaurant. We have maybe 34 seats. Um, we serve traditional ramen. Ramen in soup, noodles, toppings. That's very typical Japanese style. Yeah. And also we have tsumami, which is like um, tapas. Japanese style, and then small portions, and then it's like an izakaya style. Okay, what is the izakaya style you're referring to? Izakaya is like a bistro in French or in English, and uh, people come and then they maybe not necessarily have a big meal, but they have grignoté, you know, yeah. pick and pick and choose, pick and choose, and then accompany with sake, and then enjoy chatting, and yeah, it's like right. a bar. Yeah. What about the flavors? There's something very, you say it's traditional Japanese style ramen. What makes it traditional? Traditional, traditional, well, originally, a long time ago, it comes, it came from China, but it, we made, we love it so much that we made it very our Japanese, own. our <laughs> own, exactly. Yeah. And then each region has their specialties. I always explain to Quebecois, it's like a poutine, you know? People eat at the middle of the night, after drinking, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to finish the evening, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Or uh, many salary men they eat for lunch, very yeah. quick lunch. They come in, 15 minutes, they're gone. Yeah, and it's we we have that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's very fast paced. Yes, fast People paced. will line up. Yeah, they will line up for your it's, restaurant, Miano. Well, it goes Damn. fast. They don't wait too too long. They know that the service is fast, and then uh, people don't stay too long. So, you know, they wait half an hour, a little bit, and then they can come in. And we're always smiling, and then we're in a good mood. <laughs> yes. And your greetings. What is it you say when we come in? Irashaimase. 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 Yeah, it's like welcome when you come in the restaurant. Miano, your restaurant is here in Saint Roch. How does it all fit in? We're very unique. It's Japanese owned, and many staffs are Japanese. Although we have like staff, Quebecois staff as well, but they understand Japanese and then very open to Japanese culture. Yeah. I find the clients here. We have many regulars from the neighborhood, and they are very open. The people come in and ask us questions, and then they also try out their Japanese that they learn by themselves, and then they validate if it's okay, am I saying the right thing? Really? Yeah, yeah, wow. that's, that's, I love that. Would you say that that's what you're describing right now, mm. is the essence of saint Roch? That openness to others, the welcoming yeah. of other communities? Absolutely, absolutely, I would say so. I never have any discriminations, per se, no. here, or anywhere in Quebec. But here is very open. They're, they accept me as locals. That's very nice. I walk around and then, you know, we, we, I see my clients all the time. And then, yeah. How would you describe Saint Roch? 
What, what do you feel for someone who's about to come here for the first time? Young, artistic, vibrant. Yeah. That's pretty much... That's I think that's I, yeah. the answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess I we fit in. Time? Yeah, we fit in. Yeah. I'm not that young anymore, but... <laughs> young at heart, Piano. Yeah, no, young, young at, at heart. heart. <laughs> Let's talk about a recipe, a traditional recipe of one of the ramens. Would you maybe like to do something traditional Japanese? Traditional one? Uh, maybe shoyu ramen. Shoyu ramen for us is um, classic. The bouillon is for the, all the ramen, it's the same. I make it every, uh, every week out of uh, a chicken and pork bones. And then we have a tare, we call it tare, it's a sauce. Shoyu ramen, it's the tare, it's a mix of uh, so soya, ginger, garlic, it's, it's all mixed, secret recipe. And then we put the bouillon, so we make the base, the soup. And then we cook the noodles. And then we put the noodles in, and then we put the topping, depending on what kind of ramen you have. It's chashu ramen, you have more chashu, which is the pork, slices, very typical. And a, a, a bamboo shoot, cooked in the soy sauce and meat in and mix it like that. And green onion, a little bit of, um, sweet on top. So. And voila. Voila. Miano and I are headed for Quebec City's downtown core along Rue Saint-Joseph. This neighborhood is ever-changing, home to landmark establishments that remain in the city's landscape. Saint-Roch, or as locals say, Nouveau Saint-Roch, was the scene of a major urban revitalization project. Soon after arrived, Camellia Sinensis, a popular destination for tea lovers. This is where Miano is taking me. So what, what do you like about this place? Why did you want to bring me here? You know, I told you that I used to do catering business before Toraya, yeah. and they were my clients. Weekly, I came here to deliver my bentos. So oh. I, I'm very, I have very special feeling mm -hmm. to this place. What is it about tea that interests you? Tea is so ingrained to our culture. We take it every day, um, green tea, as well as brown tea that we call it hojicha or bancha. There's no caffeine or tea in it, so even kids can drink it. So that we, we drink tea more than we do water. And then, as a matter of fact, at the vending machine in Japan, there are a lot of uh, uh, tea bottles okay. sold in a vending machine or the uh, convenience store. It's intrinsically part of your culture. That's right. That's yeah. right. And we'll discover a little bit of that, uh, that environment. Well, how about we ask maybe the manager to come and join us. We'll talk to, uh, to Gabriel in French. So he's going to tell us a little bit about the philosophy of the place and what it is that we can discover through their teas, because they're also private importers. So they reach out directly to some of the farmers in China and they bring the tea directly here to Quebec City and Montreal. Dis-moi, quelle est la philosophie de l'entreprise de Camellia Sinensis? Euh, ben, notre philosophie, ben, c on, on l'exprime au effort, c'est la pure et simple. Donc, euh, c'est vraiment dans l'esprit de découverte, euh, de, de démocratiser le thé le plus possible avec euh, les gens. Comment est-ce que, justement, ça s'intègre dans ces rocs? C'est drôle parce que je nous sens tranquillement pas vite. On parle pas fort, on veut pas trop <rire> faire de bruit. On dirait que c'est comme un entre du, de la relaxation en plein cœur d'un quartier ouais. qui est hyper effervescent. En même temps, est-ce que je me trompe? Non, non, non. Les gens rentrent vraiment ici et ils se sentent tout de suite la... Ils se sentent détendus. Ouais. Ils viennent pour justement casser un peu le, le rythme de leur journée souvent folle. Puis c'est ce qu'on leur offre avec un thé euh, qui les sort de de leur habitude. Oui. Est-ce que ça tente de nous sortir de notre habitude? Est-ce que ben tu aurais un oui. petit quelque chose à nous proposer oui. aujourd'hui? Ben on va rester peut-être dans la thématique japonaise pour Miyano. Oui. Oui. Un... On n'est pas malheureux de ça. Oui. J'ai <rire> un gyokuro okabe. C'est un thé euh, d'ombrière, c'est-à-dire qu'on recouvre la... le champ d'un voile à peu près trois semaines avant la récolte. Ça ralentit la croissance, ça maximise les saveurs, les odeurs. Le côté chlorophylle, mmh. épinard, ces petits fruits, mmh. c'est vraiment fameux. J'ai l'impression d'être dans un grand champ de, <rire> de, de, de mmh. verdure. Est-ce que ça te rappelle des souvenirs? Do you have memories oui. coming yeah, from Yeah, of there? course, of course. And also, I, I assume that it's very important, the temperature of the water for this, of uh, course, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ouais. Mmh, Quelle est l'importance de la chaleur de l'eau en lien avec un thé qui semble être si fragile, si aromatique? Ben exactement, c'est éviter de brûler la feuille. 
Donc, de l'eau à 70 degrés, ça va, ça va infuser tranquillement. Ça va faire justement ressortir les saveurs sans, sans l'acreté, donc sans le, le côté l'amertume. Donc, on déguste? Absolument. Let's have a taste. Follow us. We'll drink some tea together. When traveling to Quebec City, stop time and don't be shy to engage in conversation with locals. We Québécois are a warm and friendly people who love to have a great time. This area of St. Joseph Street used to be a covered mall. It is now a great neighborhood for shopping. St. Roch is the most artistically vibrant neighborhood in Quebec. As we foodies know, art and food go hand in hand. Where once stood obsolete factories with buildings falling apart are now university campuses, offices of prominent architectural firms and world-renowned players in the arts and technology industry like Ubisoft, Binox and Freema. It is an area of Quebec City that is animated by artists, locals, workers, students and tourists all at once. Welcome to Saint-Henri Micro Torrefacteur, where you can witness the mix city. It's a trendy, light-filled environment where the art of making great coffee is their specialty. The coffee is sourced directly from farmers and prepared according to high standards of quality. Students and freelance workers love this place. Oh, will you look at this food porn? Fresh donuts prepared daily by Alexandre Marcille of Sumo Bengri Artisanal. She creates her gorgeous gourmet donuts according to the seasons, using as many local products as she can. Do not leave saint Roch without having one of her donuts. A little further down the streets is Acro Cuisine et Dépendance, a kitchen store filled with cooking accessories, tableware, and artisan food products from across the province. It's a great place to find foodie souvenirs. Speaking of cooking, why not take a cooking class while you're in Quebec City? I highly recommend Atelier et Saveur. I love it because of its relaxed environment, where learning how to cook is about having fun with food, wine, and cocktails, without pretension or taking himself too seriously After all, he has worked in some of the province's best high-end restaurants. Chef Antoine Corriveau shares tips and tricks of his trade. Let's meet this handsome chef. Antoine, thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you today. We're in the heart of Saint-Roch. What happens here at L'Atelier Saveur? Well, Atelier Savoir is a place where you're going to get some workshop uh, either in the uh, kitchen, either in wine tasting, or either in mixology in the cocktail world. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're touching uh, all of those subjects in, uh, I would say, friendly version because we give it for everybody. We're really uh, focused on people having fun, and that's really our uh, first thing We need people to have fun out there. Yeah. So next thing is to learn. Uh, uh, in between the activity, you're gonna get uh, uh, wine even though if you're in the kitchen. So it's all fun and you go back at home, you've learned some stuff. Yeah, uh, what's, what's it like to work in saint Roch? It's a neighborhood in development. There are a lot of uh, small businesses setting up here. There are a lot of people who are in the video game industry as well. Do you keep in mind the neighborhood when you create your kitchen classes, your cooking classes? How does it's, this work? It's really something that I enjoy because being a resident of uh, that neighborhood for about 10 years now, uh, I really enjoy saint Roch uh, for its soul. Uh, I've seen a lot of change uh, in saint Roch since, uh, let's say, about 10 years ago. There was really not a lot of restaurant first uh, and all of 
the surrounding was not as beautiful as it is right now. Uh, let's say they, re uh, they renovated a lot of St. Joseph Street, mm -hmm. uh, which brought a lot of uh, new places. Uh, we tried to fit with having activity that fit people around here. Like we have uh, what we call the Midi Express, which is an activity that uh, is only 30 minutes uh, for learning uh, one uh, kitchen uh, uh, recipe. So you're gonna come over here uh, in between, uh, let's say, noon and one in the afternoon, and you're gonna be able to eat and learn a small recipe. So it's really for the people around here that wow. we've done that. For us, it's really everyone can get in one of our workshops. So you don't have to uh, already have even entered a kitchen in your life sure. to be able to yeah. have fun. So we're gonna start with showing you how to handle the knife and yeah. then we're gonna show you how to slice an onion. Uh, yeah. So if you're uh, already able practical. to, yeah. you're gonna get something else. You're gonna get uh, that little plus. Uh, yeah. So it's by those techniques, those small techniques that you can get your cooking better. And at the same time, uh, I often call Atelier Sava like a restaurant 2.0 because you're gonna eat as well as in a restaurant, uh, but you sure. can come back at home and do pretty much the same uh, yeah. if you get uh, well. the, the chef learning right. Uh, <laughs> but at least you get the recipe. Uh, yes, so and it's you not get too the bad. techniques. Uh, and that's example that you're giving of learning how to cook the onion. I learned that from you guys. I'm a pro now. I can cook onions for the rest of my life. Like a real chef, like Antoine Corriveau. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Alison. <laughs> uh, thank you. Serug has all the ingredients to seduce a new generation of young and innovative restaurateurs like the team behind Nina Pizza Napolitaine. Traditional Napolitana pizza cooked in a 900 Fahrenheit wood-fired oven imported directly from Naples, Italy. Quality ingredients served in a vibrant, relaxed and warm atmosphere where even the playlist is worth indulging. My very favorite restaurant in Quebec City is Le Clocher Penché. I love everything about Chef Mathieu Brisson's cooking style backed by a passionate and dedicating team of cooks, waiters and sommeliers. This bistro-inspired menu features locally sourced and foraged ingredients that truly represent the essence of Quebec City's culinary culture. Here, farm to table is not a trend, it's a way of life. Quebec City is home to one of my personal top 10 food experiences in all of Canada. Welcome to Batuto. This little chef-owned and operated restaurant offers a very intimate encounter with Italian-inspired dishes. Chef Guillaume Saint-Pierre's cooking is fueled by an innovative yet very approachable use of texture, color and taste. It's not high-end gastronomy. It's not a trend-filled environment where you won't understand what you eat. It is love. It's his honest, love-filled relationship with food that you get to indulge in. And with a cocktail, shall we? Maelstrom is a coffee house during the day and a bar at night. Here's where Saint-Roch's architectural past meets the contemporary savoir-faire of coffee and cocktails. Sardinia, we're at Le Maelstrom. It's your business. Tell me a little bit more about it. Uh, well, we started two years ago in November 2015 or 16. And um, I'm the founder and co-owner. There's three of us in the business. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wanted to have a cafe, and uh, but I never thought about like mixing it with alcohol or anything like that. But we had this product like uh, cold brew coffee, which mm -hmm. is a uh, like the, the main thing we do. And uh, like the first thing we we went to was like a uh, bartender and bars to have our product to do cocktails with with it. Yeah, for them to test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after a while, we're like, well, why not? have both sides of the business in one place, having cocktail and coffee, which can 
I think it's the perfect mix. Like you start in the day having a coffee and you stay late at night and you have a cocktail and you just balance things yeah, out. Yeah, why not? And that is all set in Saint-Roch. Yeah. How does the neighborhood fit into the equation? Really well, actually. Uh, you know, Saint-Roch is kind of uh, the perfect uh, area to have a business which is kind of unusual. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what people like about Saint-Roch. It's, you know, like Patente Machin, La Faille Ketchup, or like all these small places which are you know, low profile, but really great stuff. And yeah, yeah that's what we aim. Low profile, great quality, and yeah. that's very approachable yeah. way yeah. of doing business, right? Yeah, and then we're on the corner of a, you know, uh, a part of the neighborhood which is kind of uh, less known than, you know, Rue Saint-Joseph. Yeah. So, uh, but then again, filled with artist studios. Like yeah. you walk around here, yeah. they're, they're just artist studios everywhere. Everywhere, and that's yeah. kind of our, uh, you know, the, the people that come here are also like just the, the painting on the walls, like this is my friend Joey doing this stuff and yeah. you know, we work with artists, I play music as well and everyone is involved in uh, yeah. arts in some ways, yeah. How did, how did you get involved with coffee, you yourself? Uh, well, that was just kind of a, a luck because, uh, you know, I'm from Quebec, Canada and I was really used to the Tim Horton thing and uh, <laughs> you know that, that was my jam uh, you know that, that kind of coffee and then when I went to Australia there was a really different thing uh, uh, there was like these cafes just only doing black coffee like no milk or no sugar and they were really focused on the product yeah. and uh, that was something really new for me and the first time I had like a really good shot of espresso I was like okay this is something new I never experienced that before how does then the uh, cold brew fit yeah. in there? I feel like it's the pinnacle of what this place is. It's all centered around this cold brew. Yeah, yeah, it always was and it will always be. Uh, that was the, the main thing we, we started first. And it was just like a project of mine. You know, it was kind of artsy. You know, I really liked the, the fact that I had to design my own bottle. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I did the whole design of that thing. And, you know, just sourcing coffee. I went to Costa Rica with the Pilot Coffee Roaster guys. And, you know, just, there was just a, an experiment of my own mm -hmm. and it turned out kind of well. And, you know, the, it was a good flagship for the, uh, for the cafe as well. You know, it's a, it's a product that is in people's home and people just like the bottle and they take pictures with it and they do cocktails and they share recipes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really nice to have that. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice bottle. Yeah. What does Maelstrom mean? Because that's a pretty strong word in your, uh, in your business, right? That's the whole basis of it. Yeah, well, this is the name of our main product, Cold Brew Coffee. Uh, but it's also just a nice name that you can uh, say in pretty much every language. Uh, it, it says the same in English or Scandinavian or in French. And it's a word that describes a current that happens in the ocean. Okay. And there's just a nice ring to it as well. Uh, I, I have a really nice... Uh, a uh, way of say, saying that in French, maybe you can quote that and put a little translation, Subtitle, subtitles we'll under that. Yeah. that. Uh, it says, Maelstrom est une force qui attire irrésistiblement. Oh, I like there it. There you go. So, on, I was really hooked on that thing. Yeah. I looked it up on Wikipedia. So it's look, irresistible uh, force of attraction. There you go. Yeah, ah, you said that pretty see? well. Yeah. yeah. So that's I think we need a cocktail to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, we celebrate that <laughs> with coffee in it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the, the whole part of the uh, the uh, incentive to, to visit my home is during the daytime you'll have a coffee and then during the nighttime you want to, you know, move towards the evening. You sell down, you come for a little, nice little cocktail yeah. with coffee inside so you can have fun for later on during for, the evening. There you go. You can yeah. have the little boost you need at 11 p.m. when you had like two uh, Negronis or something like that. Yeah. You just put a little coffee in your cocktail and then you're good to go until <laughs> 3 a.m. Okay, so who's going who's gonna to teach us to make a cocktail this afternoon? Uh, Renaud is a really good bartender here. Uh, He's really into tiki cocktail usually. Into tiki cocktails? Yeah, he, he, I love that. Yeah, he's a really tiki <laughs> cocktail guy, but today he's gonna do uh, something with uh, cold brew, which is not tiki. But okay. uh, if you come by to Malstrom and Renault's working, yeah. you have to have a tiki cocktail with him. Awesome. He's the best, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll meet Renault. Yeah. Thank you, Jean-Daniel, no for worries. taking some time with me. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, cheers. So today what we're going to do is an Italiano. It's a cocktail very famous here in uh, Malstrom Saint-Lac. It's made with uh, Cinao, which is an uh, Italian Amaro made with uh, artichoke. Grapefruit juice, cold brew coffee, chocolate bitter. You take all the ingredients, you mix it in a shaker, 
you will find strain it in a colon glass, top it with tonic, garnish with a beautiful uh, grapefruit zest. That chocolate bitter made all the difference in that beautiful cocktail at Maelstrom Café in Serroc. I sure hope you were able to witness these very small and infinitely passionate details of all the four neighborhoods that were presented at Foodie Guide to Quebec City. I'm Alison Van Russell. Quebec City is my home. I love it. I love these people. And that was me sharing my love for these beautiful artisans that make Quebec City a foodie destination. Come on. Come join us. Have some fun. Cheers. Cheers.